Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Justin from Inlight Studio, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I created this fashion magazine kind of mock up. Fashion magazines have a very distinct style when it comes to retouching and and model spaces and so on. So this is a pretty fun project to do. This is the before image that I took and uh, this is what I did with it afterwards. So we just have a look without all the magazine elements. That was all the retouching steps and then placing all the magazine text and so on over it. So let me show you how I did this one. Uh, we start with the base photograph. This is one I took of a model for her portfolio and uh, just decided to use it because I like the facial expression that she's giving and it just kind of has that look of high-end fashion magazine kind of cover so it was a pretty good basis to start from. So um, the first step in this would be to work on the skin um, and the method that I use is called uh, frequency separation and what that essentially does is it is it takes all this texture that we see in her skin and separates that from the the bottom tone of her face and um, it, it allows us to kind of blur everything out and then put the texture back on top of that so it gives you some nice control and then also smooths it out pretty good so what we do is first step is going to be to duplicate this layer and uh, we need to separate the skin only because that's what we're going to be working on uh, so we go to the masking option which is this little button at, at the bottom here and that creates a mask for it double click on it and we're going to choose color range so now the color pick comes up and we've got to start sampling the colors that we're going to isolate and only work on so we'll click on the skin and then hold the shift button and that's going to add to the selection of what we're working on so we just keep kind of almost painting over a face while holding shift and you can see over here the expansion is starting to choose more colors to work on um, it's also selecting some of the hair which we don't need so I'm going to bring the fuzziness down a bit which kind of narrows it down and then also by holding the alt key that subtracts from the selection so I'm going to go over the hairs because we don't want this as part of the mask so we just keep going we've kind of just got to keep clicking and refining this as much as you can holding shift again to add to the selection because I want to include this part just trying to get it so that it's only got the face in the white and everything else is black so we just keep going alright that seems pretty decent so once you're done you can say ok so I just want to see the mask by itself so we can have a look of what has been selected and we can see there's a bit of areas that don't need to be there so we can just refine this a bit more and um, we can take the normal brush tool select black and just paint all this away because we don't want all this to be affected by the filters that we are about to use on the skin alright so we generally can see we've just got the skin selected another step I do um, is while having the mask selected is using the levels adjustment so you go to image adjustments and levels and just bring this in a bit so that's kind of crushing the blacks and the white a bit more so that it's just hardening the edge of the mask so we know we've got everything in here as white as can be and then we know it's all selected okay and then we can alt click again on this and the mask is no longer active so if you just I'll click on the eye drop on this layer and shows us what we've now cut out of the image which is just basically the skin so you can also again refine the mask a bit more this time I'm using the white brush because everything that's white will show through everything that's black will disappear so all of this you can use black paint that away all of this does not need to be selected because it's not part of the skin so you kinda gotta spend some time on this just refining your mask as much as possible. It's not critical to get it 100% correct, but just as close as you can saves you a bit of work because we'll have to paint some of this away later on again. Alright, that seems pretty good. So I'll click there and everything's back to normal. 
Now with this layer and its mask done, we need to duplicate this. So we'll press Control J and do it twice. We've got two copies of it. Can name. We should probably just rename this to keep it organized. We can name the bottom one, the first one that we did, blur. And this one we'll call texture one. Whoops. And this one we'll call texture two. Great. Alright, so we can turn off the first two layers. We're not going to work on the texture just yet. First one is the blur layer. So with that selected, you go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. So what we've got to do now is blur the skin so that it kind of evens out the entire, all the tone of the face and just gets rid of any blemishes and any spots. Um, so you don't want to exaggerate this too much because that just doesn't, it just hazes it so much you don't see a thing. But generally, um, I use between 40 to 60 pixels seems to work well. Um, we just want to keep some of the contrast in our face as well still. So around there, somewhere around there looks good. And I click OK. So that's blurred the face out. Now we've got to put the texture back. To do that, we go to our first texture layer, turn it back on. All right, so now we see the original overlaid on top of it. Then you go to Filter, Other, and High Pass. And what this is going to do is it's going to it's going to create this kind of texture map of all the little fine detail on the face. Let me just go closer so you can see it. So filter, Other, High Pass. So I make two two layers like this because we're going to separate two different sets of of the frequency of our face. So the first set. I, um, we're going to use the fine small detail and to do that the radius of about 2.2 .2 pixels works best um, the higher up you go you can see the more detail we start getting back in the facial texture so let's start with all the small fine details so somewhere around 2 pixels will show all that and then click OK and then next we're going to change this layer to soft light and that's going to overlay the texture back on top of the blur filter so if we go if we have a look and go closely here, uh, you can see turning it on and off. It's kind of put some of that fine detail back on, which looks pretty good. Right, next we're going to go to our second texture layer and do the same thing. We'll turn this back on, filter, other, and high pass. And now we're going to go slightly higher radius just to get some of the larger detail back in, somewhere around 4 pixels or so gets all that back and then we turn this one also to blending mode to soft light alright so that's put a lot of the texture back in now we can start playing around with how much of this effect we want in so this layer I'm gonna dial it down to quite low around 30% and the second one I'll bring it to about 50 or so and the blur filter so what we're going to do now is start painting some of this away so that the effect is not so strong and also because her nose has disappeared um, so it's generally good to do this with a, a tablet if you have, just because of finer strokes makes it a lot easier to control, but but it can obviously also be painted with your mouse if you don't have one. So we're going to go to the brush tool, click on the mask, make sure the mask is selected, and set our brushes to black and white. A quick way to reset your brushes is to click this little two squares over here, just puts them back to black and white. So we're using the black brush, that's going to paint the blur away using the white brush is going to paint it back in so in this case we need to get rid of some of it so we can use the black brush set your opacity to to quite low um, it's better to kind of gradually take it away so that you have better control so I use about 10% a large soft brush you just check your brush settings make sure the hardness is all the way down and then we're going to start painting over this so that it's removing the blur effect from certain areas that shouldn't be there. Now we just start painting it away. You may also need to increase your brush strength just so you can paint it away a lot quicker. Alright, so I've finished painting where I want the blur to be in. You can just turn this on and off. We can have a look of how it's just smoothed the skin out. 
Um, next thing you've got to do is drop the opacity of this blur layer um, just so that the effect is not this strong. You want it to look slightly re more realistic than this. So we can just drop this. I usually use between 60 and 70 percent but that will change depending on your image. So you kind of got to judge this by your eye and that looks quite good. So now we can turn our texture layers back on. So you can see it's brought that fine detail back in if we turn it off. Turn it back on, looks pretty good now. Um, you also got to play around with the opacity of your texture layers. Just to dial in the right amount of texture that doesn't look overly sharp. And that's making the skin look pretty good. If we go to the original, see what it was, what it is now. It's got a pretty realistic smoothing over it, so that looks quite good. Alright, so this we're done with. We can select all these layers and group them which by pressing Ctrl G. And we'll just rename this skin. So we've got all our skin retouching in one layer. Next step is going to be working on some of the darker areas of the skin, like under the eyes and just any patchy areas that we think needs fixing and that's the the common method of airbrushing so what we're gonna do is go through a new layer which you can do this little icon down here and then take the brush tool and then just sample a color off of the existing skin so I'll use somewhere around there again with a very low brush of about 10% and we're just gonna start painting over these areas or we're sampling from an area around somewhere nearby and just airbrushing all over the image just to get that soft beauty kind of look You don't have to be afraid about going overboard because uh, I always ma exaggerate the effect slightly just so that I can dial it back again with the opacity slider. Alright, so have a look. That's We've just painted over some of the darker areas with the airbrush. Now I'm just going to bring it back down quite low. It's around 39, so it's fine. Let's just lighten those areas up a bit, which looks, looks a lot better. Okay, the next step is going to be what's called dodge and burn. Um, that's going to just be bringing all the highlights out and pushing all the shadows down. So it's kind of like adding contrast to to the face, but it just uh, gives you a much finer control as to what you're highlighting. So to do that, so to do that, we create a new layer, which you can do down here. Also, we use layer and new layer. Just say okay, so that creates a blank layer. And now you're going to change the blending mode of this layer to soft light. And again, use a black or white brush. So what this blending mode does is anything with black, if we paint, makes that area darker. We just do it quite harshly so you can see. Darkens those areas. And anything with white brightens it. So you can just erase all this. So if we very subtly with a black or white brush, can start contrasting your face and just contouring it like a makeup artist would. Um, so for this I'm going to set my opacity very very low to about 6 or 7 percent. Also maybe even bring the flow down just so we have fine control over what we're doing. So I use the black brush and start with the dark areas. So like the cheeks, maybe push the brush up a bit. So you can start making this darker. Um, you just want to do it to all the, all the shadow areas on her face like on the edges of the nose and you have the chin just on the cheekbones as well just also under the on the eyelashes and the eyelids you just want to darken that so it just makes the eye stand out more so any dark area you're just enhancing that a bit making it stand out more so also on these steps you just gotta slowly build the effect up and even sometimes walk away, come back, carry on just so that your eyes see it from a fresh perspective. And 
Okay, so we're going to dock in the pupil. The outside of our iris. Alright, so you can turn the layer off every now and again just to check on your progress and see how you're doing. Next I'm going to use the white brush and then start painting over the highlighted areas. So these areas of the cheek, the hot spots on the nose, all the shiny highlights on the lips as well, and the chin. And then also on the color area of our eye, just make that stand out a bit more. Just brighten the eyes. So as always, we push the effect a little bit so that it's exaggerated and then we can dial it down with the opacity slider. Okay, so we can have a look at before and after. So now we can bring this layer down maybe about 35 or so. You can see it's just subtly increased the contrast nicely on her face. Have a look at our before image. After it's good to just check on your before and after every now again just to see what you're doing. Alright so now I just do some more tonal adjustments and uh, I use curves quite a lot just to fine tune different t parts of the image. Um, but you can do that by going to adjustments and selecting the curves and it adds an adjustment layer above it and then using this the hand picker which is to modify a specific point of color here so I'm going to take the shadows click and drag it down and that's going to darken that particular area and then on the highlights click and drag up and that's going to brighten that particular part of the area so it's really exaggerated the contrast which is what I want and then I'm going to invert the mask, change this to, to the opposite, so Control i that inverts it and it disappears. And then with a white brush we can paint this effect back in. So again with a low opacity of about 10% on the brush over there. And just paint this contrast very subtly back in over the face only. And again you can turn it on and off and see what we're doing. So it's just these subtle adjustments that make it stand out. So that looks good. Um, I'm starting to notice that the eye still seems a bit dark underneath it, so I'm just going to make another layer and using the airbrush again, using the brush tool on that layer, sample an area close by and just paint over it again just to slightly brighten it further. Same thing over here. Just see before and after, and then just drop the opacity just to make it blend in nicely. So that looks better. Got rid of that shadow there. Okay, so now with all these contrast additions, we've kind of pushed the saturation of her face where it looks a little bit too um, red. So I'm going to use the U saturation adjustment layer, which is this one here. And then we just want to isolate the yellow red areas of her face. So to do that, we go to this drop down here and select the reds and this little range here shows you what it's affecting so I'm just gonna stretch this a bit more because we wanna we can drag this area and just widen the the selection I just want it to affect these particular tones here which is red to that slight yellow over there so it's just gonna affect that scale there and then we can drop the saturation you can see it's only affecting that color it's either gonna push it up or push it down so just drop it a bit but you can also affect the hue of it, so if maybe you notice the skin has a certain tint to it, you can change that here if you need to. Her skin tone is pretty good, so I'm going to leave it at zero. And that's drop the saturation, and again, you can play with opacity just to see how much of that effect we want over it. So I'll keep it at about 80. And as before and after, it's just nicely dropped the color, but so it's not so harsh. Alright, looks good, and again, we can go check on our progress so far to see how we're doing. So already it's looking quite good, like a fashion magazine. Okay, next, we just again, I'm gonna just enhance certain areas of it, so let's do the lips maybe, and again, I'm gonna use curves. Um, 
using the pick a tool and the shadows are going to drop go down pull the mouse down and on the highlights click and go up so we're just contrasting those two areas you can see it's making the contrast curve here you can also play with these points if you want to maybe manually adjust it a bit that's fine and again invert this mask so select the mask press ctrl i and it's inverted and then again using a white brush with a low opacity just paint this effect back in so again before and after you can see how we've affected it and can again just to drop your opacity of your in the layer so you can blend the effect in nicely I'm going to do the same thing to the eyes using the curves and then just going to drop shadows increase the highlights alright and again invert the mask go to the brush tool the white brush low opacity over by 20 and just paint this into this particular area only You can turn it on and off and just see how it's nicely brightened the eyes and then again just want to subtly add this back in so that it's not too much and you constantly also want to zoom in and out and see how the overall bigger picture of your image looks because things can look different when you've zoomed in so it looks great so now I'm just going to apply a final tonal curve just to affect the entire image um, just to give it that fashion kind of low contrast look so I'm just going to slightly push the highlights and bring the black point up to give it that almost faded look so you've just got to play with the uh, with the shadows and then again play with opacity this is the awesome thing is that it lets you control the effect afterwards so you can dial in just the right amount that you want great so it looks pretty good and there we have it we've created a awesome fashion portrait you can always you can have a look at the before and after again that's what it was after all the retouching the so final step is to merge all of this into a new layer and do that with control alt shift e all of this gets put into a new layer and then uh, we put it into our magazine template um, you, there's so many ways to get this you can either create them yourself with all these different texts and fonts or you could even get them on the internet there's so many mockups that are available out there you just search for Photoshop magazine mock and there's pretty much so many out there that you could use so this is one that I've got, um, that's without the cover image in there now so I'm going to take the image that we've just created the one that's been merged and drag this into my magazine template and now I can place it right there underneath all the magazine elements so yeah that's how I made this uh, fashion magazine cover hopefully it's something useful that you could use out of that so thanks for watching if you have any questions or feedback feel free to let me know and i'll see you next time